Welcome back to my channel. This update is an early Christmas present for DIY BMS users who have lots of cells in their power walls because we're looking at increasing the communication speed between the controller and the modules. I'm about to go into a deep dive of how the communications works uh, inside the BMS. So if you don't care about this, skip forward to see how to get this latest update and which version of the module hardware it supports. So let's start with a diagram of a typical DIY BMS setup. First, we have the controller and a module. And if we duplicate that to four modules, I can also add on some labels and mark the transmit and receive connections. And finally, we can draw the cables linking everything together. When the controller wants to request data from the modules, it sends a packet of data out on the TX lines in a serial format. The first module receives that request, checks the message is valid, processes it, and then passes, passes the message on to the next module. The data hops between all modules eventually returning to the controller. This daisy chain communication is the core of the DIY BMS system and allows it to be flexible and scale to different size battery banks. The time it takes for a message to travel through the system is called the round trip time. If one module stops working, the chain is broken and communication stops. The controller can detect this as it won't be getting any replies, so it can then take action to shut down or raise errors as needed. The data flowing through the modules looks like this. We have the start and end addresses. This allows either a single module or a range of modules to be addressed. Next is the command to process. The hops are incremented for each module the data flows through. It starts at zero when it leaves the controller. Using this value, the controller can determine how many modules are connected to the whole chain. Sequence is a number which is incremented with each request and allows the controller to detect missing replies. Next, we have a data section. This is 32 bytes in length, with two bytes allocated to each module. So a single request can get replies from a maximum of 16 modules. Any more than 16 modules requires multiple requests and replies. If we have a command that doesn't require a reply, then technically a single command can address all the modules in the system in one go. The data section is also used to pass parameters to the modules from the controller. In this scenario, a module is normally individually addressed, and this is what's used when you configure an individual module from the web interface. And finally, we've got a checksum. This is used to detect corruption of the data whilst in transit, and each module and controller check this before processing the packet. Putting all this together results in a 40 byte packet which hops through the uh, chain at approximately four second intervals. If you look at the web interface, you can see a value for the round trip time. This is simply the amount of milliseconds it takes for the data to be transmitted and then received by the controller. In this example, there are only two modules and it takes just over half a second to get a reply from both modules. So if we multiply this up to a larger battery bank, say one with 48 modules, at that scale, it takes nearly 13 seconds to get a reply back to the controller. Once a round trip exceeds eight seconds, will start to see the modules waking up on their own and making a uh, double flash of the LED. This is the inbuilt watchdog and the module failsafe. If the module hasn't communicated with the controller for eight seconds, it will wake up, take a voltage reading and enter bypass if needed all on its own. Unfortunately, I can't change the eight second timer as this is a hardware limit of the Tiny chip. So hopefully by now you are keeping up with me because this is gonna get even more complex. So why is the round trip time so slow? Fundamentally, this is all to do with the speed at which the data is sent between the, the modules. The modules operate at 2,400 baud. This is really slow, even for microcontrollers like the AtTiny used in the uh, DIY BMS. Let me explain how I ended up with this current solution and how it's been changed in newer module designs. The original DIY BMS modules, known as version three, used an I2, I2C serial communication and quite expensive I2C uh, isolating chips and whilst this design was robust, I2C isn't designed to uh, be used in long cable runs. These parts also required a higher amount of power to operate, 
And the last thing you want with a battery management system is for it to drain the battery. In an effort to reduce cost and complexity, version 4 devices used a simpler opto-isolator and the daisy chain arrangement I've just described. I also got rid of the voltage regulators so the Atani chip runs at the same voltage as the cell it's monitoring. This is great for reducing power consumption, however it does come with a negative. I use the internal clock of the Aptiny chip running at 2 MHz. And a particular quirk of this chip is that the internal clock frequency varies quite a lot uh, with the change in external voltage and temperature. So as the battery cells are charged and discharged, the Aptiny chip gets slightly faster or slower depending on the voltage. The microchip data sheet gives us a, a graph which explains the expected behaviour of the frequency at different voltages. You can see a standard lithium voltage range. Um, you, you, there could be as much as 100 kHz difference across the range. This frequency is directly used to drive the clocks in the serial hardware inside the chip. So when a cell balancing is performed, the voltage is rapidly bouncing up and down, which in turn causes fre the frequency to become unstable for communications at higher baud rates. At slow, slower rates, the chips can keep up, even when the frequency is rapidly changing. This website has a handy calculator which shows the amount of error you're likely to get at various baud rates. The right hand side of the table is relevant to us. We can see at various baud rates and CPU frequencies the expected error rate. Even though an error rate as low as 0.8% seems, seems acceptable, this is made worse by the frequency rapidly changing and not staying constant. We can see that if we had a perfect 2 MHz signal, most of the error rates are very low. So how do we fix this? Can we get the higher throughput? We could operate the Aptiny chip at a higher frequency. It could go to 4 MHz for example. However, if we look at the Aptiny datasheet again, we can see that the maximum frequency is limited based on the voltage. And ultimately, we would still have the same issues even at higher clock frequencies. So one option would be to provide a stable voltage to the microcontroller, similar to what we did with the, with the old version 3 of the modules. The downside of this is the need to add on additional hardware components, uh, such as a book boost converter, and that, that would then require additional power to operate. We could also add an external clock through the use of a crystal oscillator. And this is the change I made to the version 4.4 modules quite a long time ago now, with the intention of actually improving the speed at some point in the future. If we take a look at the 4.4 boards, you can see the oscillator chip just above the Aptiny. The oscillator is the reason why one of the LEDs was also removed, as the Aptiny didn't have enough data pins available when using it an external clock. So now we have a consistent clock operating at 2 MHz. We can use the calculator to show us theoretical error rates. As can be seen, anything higher than about 20,000 is going to increase the error rates. We don't have to stick to the tr traditional baud rate, so in this instance I've tried 5,000 bits per second, which should give us an error rate of zero, as it's a perfect multiple of the clock, the clock frequency. We also have hardware limitations in other parts of the system, so, such as the ESP32 and also the opto-isolators. If you skipped over the technical details, Welcome back to the video. This change only works for version 4.4 modules, which contains the crystal oscillator chip. Please don't try the code on other versions of the board as it changes the configuration fuses on the Aptiny and you won't be able to flash them back without a lot of pain and hard work. I've produced uh, two new versions of the module code for you to try. One version of the new code operates at 9,600 baud and the other at 5,000. I'll let you experiment which one works better for you in your own setups. If you have a working system at the moment, there isn't a compelling need to update unless you want to, or perhaps you're thinking about expanding your battery bank and adding more modules. This change is really about enabling larger battery packs to be built. The controller is limited to 128 modules in total, but I still recommend uh, sticking to the safer DC voltages up to about 48 volts. Earlier in the video, I mentioned the round trip time. If we use the same example of uh, 48 modules, but using the newer, faster 9,600 baud rate, which is four times faster than the existing code, the round trip should drop from nearly 13 seconds to just over three. Okay, so some points to note. This update only works with the version 4.4 modules. Uh, there's no hardware changes to, required. You cannot have mixed versions of the hardware modules, so they all need to be 4.4. 
Uh, I would recommend trying the uh, 9K6 or the 9600 version first, and then if you run into communications issues, drop to the, the sli slightly slower 5000 version. You'll have to re reprogram all of the modules for this to work, and you'll also have to update the controller firmware to support this change. Don't forget to unplug the modules from the battery before programming. Once you've programmed the modules, ensure you select the correct communication speed in the controller to match the modules. Once you have saved the settings, don't forget to power the controller off and back on again. If you look at my previous videos, uh, they explain how to update the modules and the controller code using the pre-built files on GitHub. As usual, feedback is welcome. Take a look at the forum for that, and a big thank you to my Patreon supporters whose names will be appearing on screen very soon. If you would like to support this project, see the links in the description. So until next time, goodbye.